Each and every year, theme parks and amusement parks around the world compete for the attention of vacationers. Part of the audience contains the ever-growing group of guests looking for the thrill of a lifetime. While new traditional coasters continue to pop up at parks around the world, companies work with parks to constantly push the envelope to create something incredible, unique, and innovative. One of these innovative and unique coaster types was a result of a truly out-of-the-box design and fierce competition, the Fourth Dimension Coaster. While not relying on heavy theming like at theme parks, the Fourth Dimension Coaster sought to stand out in another way, by putting a spin on wing coasters that would turn the industry upside down. Over the past several years, amusement park chains have sought to stand out to the potential guest by introducing different kinds of fourth dimension coasters to their offerings. While the type of coaster originated in California, it has since spread throughout the country into various parks overseas as well. These coasters are like nothing else and steer far away from the experience of a traditional roller coaster. In this video, we'll go over what 4D coasters are, how the multiple different designs work, and the history of this type of coaster. So sit back, relax, because this is how 4th Dimension coasters work. Four D coasters are often large coasters that traverse a track like normal traditional coasters have for many years. The fourth dimension name comes from the coaster's ability to allow riders to rotate or move on a different axis than the track. This means that riders are not always following the orientation or direction of travel the track or the train are. There are different systems that have been developed to create this feature that allows it for a one-of-a-kind and often unpredictable ride. Actually, the first time I ever thought about doing a ride like this was as a kid, about 12 years old, riding the zipper. It's my favorite ride at a fair. It does front flips and back flips. And way back then, I thought, hey, wouldn't it be great to, you know, put one of these on a roller coaster? So However, the idea was shunned and was seen as impossible. Until then, President of Magic Mountain, Gary Story, was about to leave after an underwhelming presentation from Arrow. He presented a brief animation of the coaster, and Story greenlit the building of a small prototype section of track that demonstrated what riders could expect. Allen was later able to finally put his grand idea into motion with the creation of the 4th Dimension coaster, and when executives were able to finally ride the prototype, a full-scale coaster was greenlit. While other manufacturers were busy competing for the tallest, fastest coasters with the most inversions, Shoki took aerodynamics down a different path to create something that was completely out of left field and would stun guests and die-hard coaster enthusiasts alike. Would it be a giant success and the next big thing? Maybe. In 2002, Six Flags Magic Mountain, along with aerodynamics unveiled what would become the start of a very public competition to build the weirdest looking white knuckle coaster. X was billed as the world's first fourth dimension coaster that was originally slated to open in 2001. However, the coaster would face numerous issues during its construction and testing. The ride finally opened early the next year with the park attempting to cover the delays with the large fanfare of the opening. Hmm, where, where have I heard that before? Hold on. What, what is it? Aren't you going to mention it? Mention what? About Arrow. Oh, um, I, I guess I'm, I'm getting there, so hold on. Unfortunately, due to the complications of the ride's construction, get to the point. I'm trying to be professional here. Just, just let me get there. I'm getting there. Unfortunately, due to the complications of the ride, Arrow went bankrupt because Magic Mountain sued them into the ground. Yes, that, that happened. Yes, we know. P please stop interrupting. Whatever. Go. I, I'm recording right now. No, I'm going to sit here and make sure you don't f Anywho, Arrow has a business folded as a result, but SNS, a company known for their drop towers and small launch coasters, swooped in and bought their patents and assets. Later in 2007, Magic Mountain announced the closure of the original X coaster 
and that it would undergo many mechanical changes and upgrades that would ensure the park's now $46 million investment stayed working for many years to come. The original X trains were weighed in each at 50,000 pounds, or roughly 25 tons. As you can imagine, 25 tons of rushing by at 76 miles an hour did not do any favors for the coaster's track, and the ride structure began to be loaded with immense stress with each and every cycle. During this large renovation, the entire train was redesigned to drastically reduce the weight of the trains. This was done by creating a reinforced hollow beam-like structure and punching holes into the structure that reduced the weight while not jeopardizing the car's structural integrity. Another point of change were the restraints. The park opted to replace the often jammed mechanical restraints for pneumatic ones, reducing downtime. The most notable addition was that the park opted to add onboard audio to each seat and each train. A zero car was utilized and audio equipment was stacked and bolted to it. The train charges in the station through batteries that are scattered throughout the train and cars are fed their audio cables back to each seat. The fourth dimension coaster made by aerodynamics seems complicated from a broad view, but it's actually rather simple in mechanics. The train the rider utilizes has double the amount of bogies, which are the grips where the wheels are located. This is because the ride track has four rails instead of the typical two rails. The two middle rails are mainly for supporting the weight of the train, they're the load-bearing rails, but also act as a solid point of mechanical reference for the spin mechanics. The fourth dimension coaster uses those two other rails to have another set of wheels control the position of a large linear rack gear that passes through the car's chassis. The position of the rail varies along the course and therefore moves the linear rack that rotates the pinion gears flipping riders. This function and the train's ability to act as an inverted coaster where the track is above you and transition back to a normal coaster means that the rotations can position riders upside down, right side up, backwards, forwards, they can even be traveling backwards while being upside down, and more. The ride experience is enhanced through the spin mechanics by leaving the station with riders facing backwards. Instead of seeing the lift tail, riders face the other way as they enjoy the view and the idea that they can't see where the drop is, while while the onboard audio revs riders up heightening their fears. After disengaging from the lift, the seats are rotated to face downwards as riders plummet more than 200 feet straight down. I, I'm recording, I just told you earlier. Why are you back here? Don't worry, it's about what you just said. Okay, wh what about it? The drop is actually 88.5 degrees, so you're wrong. D does it really matter though? I mean, it's it's practically straight down. You, you say so much on that ride that it might as well make up the extra bit. Wait, 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 wait. So you're saying X2 is rough. Oh, oh, the people are going to hate on you. You just wait. You look in those comments right now. Oh, X2 is the greatest ride in the world. You better watch it. In the theme park and amusement park ride industry, unique ride designs and concepts are often improved upon by competitors in an attempt to outsell each other. The fourth dimension coaster was no different. Just a few years after the premiere of the Aerodynamics 4th Dimension Coaster and the fall of the company as a whole, Intamin released a concept of an interestingly similar compact coaster dubbed the Zaxpin. This coaster took a direct aim at the market of the 4th Dimension Coaster sold by Aerodynamics, seeking to offer parks a compact, reliable, and inexpensive alternative to the large behemoth of a ride Aero offered. This new 4D coaster also sought to solve many of the physical and mechanical issues of the ride. The Zaxpin kept the ride compact by keeping the layout to a flat vertical plane while the track dives underneath itself while still keeping riders on the left and on the right of the track. Intamin's design also carefully sidestepped Arrow's patented design by introducing out-of-control spins, something the company sought to push as a more thrilling and marketable feature for parks and their guests. The ride positioned two riders on each side of a vehicle with the axis of rotation lying just behind the riders in the center. There are two areas for four riders on each side of the car for eight riders per car. The car and the seats rotate freely of each other and they're not controlled by any additional track or rail, but can be moderately controlled with a dampener by the ride operator. 
This means that, depending on the weight distribution of those on board, riders could be in for a mild number of flips or crazy flips due to one side being heavier. In the station, there are two loading sides for riders and the car is mechanically kept from rotating via small wheel and push rail. When the car begins to ascend up the lift, the seats are no longer prevented from rotating and the riders can get an idea of how off balance their seats are. Once the car disengages with the lift, a small dip begins to rock the seats as the car makes its way to the edge of the track where it then dives underneath itself, forcefully flipping riders. The layout consists of either a single raven turn or two raven turns and a short break run and an additional hill. Both layouts pull out of the raven turn and into a fishhook shaped hill where the other side is the magnetic break run. While Intamin was successful in selling a few of these coasters around the world, problems persisted mostly with the first installation of the Zaxpin in the US, at Six Flags Magic Mountain, oddly enough. When the ride was installed as part of a large investment into the park in 2011, it was opened as a normal extended layout with two Raven turns. However, due to California regulations, the ride was soon closed to be fitted with weights on the cars between the fins of the seats. These additional weights were supposed to lessen their aggressive flipping and balance their car more as they would make it harder to get the seats to flip, but unfortunately this didn't work. Often this left riders upside down at the end of the ride for an extended period of time until they could be righted. The flips and dives during the ride became too aggressive and in combination with the uncomfortable restraints, the popularity of the ride in the park took a dive off a cliff. Toward the end of its stay at Magic Mountain, many complained of injuries and violent movements on the ride and one rider eventually sued the park for it. While we don't know if this played a role in the infamy of the ride, no other Zaxpins have been sold since. Personally, I rode this ride in its final months and was one of only 10 people in line on a summer evening. While I can't judge the Zaxpins overseas, this one was just downright awful. You could say that it felt like skydiving with a pallet of bricks, and that it was just overly aggressive and took away from the experience, and that there was no fun in riding it, it was just painful. Painful like listening to your videos? Get out. Why, why are you still here? I'm going to introduce the next ride. No, you're not. That That's my job. It's the big one. Stop. It's the clone of the decade. Stop. The SNS 40 free spin. <sighs> Why, why do I put up with this? As I said, the SNS 40 free spin was the next in line of new 40 coasters, but SNS was making it this time because they actually had the rights to use Arrow's patents and idea. However, they didn't opt to make another 4th dimension coaster and actually discontinued the Arrow designed 4th dimension coaster after two other installations. Instead, they decided to take direct aim at Intamin by taking into account the issues the Zaxpins had and improving on them. Like before, SNS created a small test track for customers to ride, and in 2015, Six Flags Fiesta Texas introduced Batman the Ride, the first 4D free fly coaster from SNS. The new take on the Zaxpin would be the taller, longer, and better version of the long hated Zaxpin. The ride works in a very similar way to the Zaxpins, but solved a lot of its issues. From the start, the cars took four riders on each side and split them into two groups of two riders per side. Next, the restraints were swapped for softer vest restraints that allowed more absorption for sudden movements. The most important part is how it spins, and the 40 free spin coaster solved the uncomfortable spinning by moving the axis of rotation to the middle of the rider's body around the heart, instead of behind them like on the Zack spins. This move allows the flips to be more comfortable and less aggressive compared to the Zack spins. Instead of relying on sudden changes in direction to spin and flip riders, the SNS 40 free spin cars have magnetically reactive discs that work with strategically placed magnetic fins on the track. By the way, the track is actually made by RMC, oddly enough, and RMC has one of their head designers is Alan Shoki. Imagine that. When the car passes over each fin, it forces a rotation out of the seats and, depending on weight distribution, you can rock heavily back and forth or take a full front or back flip during the ride. These fins can be placed nearly anywhere on the layout, not only creating different rides, but different intensities as well. 
The layout comprises of a vertical lift on which more of the fins are placed to preview what's to come. After leaving the lift, the car traverses a few small hills before diving under itself, sailing through several more small hills and into a large raven turn, and then into the brakes. There is a slightly longer layout that SNS offers, but no parks have opted to upgrade to it. After 2015, the 40 free spins began to pop up mostly at Six Flags parks as they were cheap and highly marketable coasters. One was installed at Nagashima Spa Line in Japan, but no other parks outside Six Flags have yet to install one or open one yet. Currently, there are 8 40 free spin coasters in operation around the world and Six Flags owns 7 of them. There is, however, another coming to China in 2020 at World Fairy Tale Land, a new park in China with a milder layout, but we will have to wait to see if that ever opens. In 2019, a standard 40 free spin was built at my home park of Six Flags Discovery Kingdom and is by far the more superior experience compared to Intamin's. It's definitely nowhere near as tense as the original Aero 40 coaster, but it's an enjoyable experience that fits any size rider and delivers an excellent thrill. With the large success of the SNS 40 free spin, Intamin responded by doing what they do best and copying pretty much everything the SNS did. Their new Zack Spin has modified seats, a very familiar layout, and apparently a launched lift tail. Oh boy. Intamin has been unsuccessful at securing a single buyer for this new version of the Zack Spin, so it's safe to say that SNS has definitely won this battle. Green Lantern First Flight at Six Flags Magic Mountain was actually removed in late 2019 and will be relocated to La Ronde with new track. Altogether, the 4th Dimension Coaster has delivered unique and unparalleled rides for thrill seekers around the world through its many versions and features. The technology works in unison to create a white knuckle thrilling adventure that has amazed and blown away millions and will continue to do so for decades to come. I hope you've enjoyed this informational dive into the inner workings of 4D coasters. We create these videos to showcase the awe-inspiring technology and engineering that goes into creating the rides we yell our heads off on daily. Thank you for joining us and we hope you've inspired your curiosity through technology and engineering. Be sure to check out our playlist of other How It Works videos in the iCard above, featuring many of your favorite rides from around the world. We make educational ride models and the links to our social media where you can find additional coverage are below. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support us and get early access to these videos, you can visit my Patreon, a link for which is also below. Five numbered gears were hidden within this video. If you spotted all five of them, comment below the combined code and you'll get a shout out in the next video. A special congrats to Henry Kent and Coaster Dave who found all five gears in the last video. Once again, thank you so much for watching and subscribing. Welcome to Amusement Labs, and we'll see you in the parks.